Now speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. School sports days. Remember those? Yes. Anyone a fan of them? There's a yes. <laughs> wow. So many memories. Most of them not particularly good. And I was reflecting on the relay race at such an event. You know what it's like? You're standing there. You're standing there. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're rubbish to the last one, you know. Willing on those who have gone before that they'll get there or they'll give up the whole race and just cancel you come last. And you wonder, will they ever arrive? And then if they do, <coughs> will I manage to get hold of that baton? Keep hold of it and run? Will I drop it? Will I be good enough to race or will I just fall over and embarrass myself? Yeah, it turns into a bit like <laughs> Benny Hill kind of thing, doesn't it? Or with what I like at sports anyway, I've probably done your back just doing that stupid movement. <laughs> We're a funny time in the church's year. Ascension was on Thursday, Pentecost, this coming Sunday a week's time. Jesus has ascended into heaven. We celebrated on Thursday. He's promised the Holy Spirit will come, but it's not there yet, at least not in the account in Acts. In John's Gospel, it's all at the same time. I'm going, receive the Holy Spirit, those whose sins you forgive, they're forgiven, etc. And Jesus ascends. But in Luke and Acts, there's this wait. Until that massive, everyone speaking in tongues, or hearing the different languages. And so here we are. Here they are, come to that in this time between Ascension and Pentecost, waiting, wondering, panicking even. What's happening? Where's he gone? Did he really go up in the air? Do we imagine it? Is it real? What will happen next? What do you think about this Holy Spirit coming down? What's all that about, you know? What are people going to think? They were talking about going about Acts, laughing. So they're hiding away, literally. But Jesus has promised the Holy Spirit will come. Jesus, God, has promised and does not break those promises. And so we're in this liminal place in the church's season, this place between one thing and another. A time of transition, a time of change, a time of waiting, maybe patiently, maybe expectantly. What is God going to do? Is God going to show up? Is God going to do anything? Or is it all a dream? You know, then suddenly, wham! The Holy Spirit comes. People are transformed. People are hearing all the different in their native languages. Healings are happening, miracles are happening, people are coming to faith. The disciples are changed from being these, I wouldn't say boo to a goose, hiding away, to suddenly preaching eloquently to people in such a way that others come to believe for themselves. What a change. At Pentecost. So often we end up in a similar position really, though, don't we? Something's coming, we're not quite sure what or how, what will happen, will it all be rubbish? We're reassured the Holy Spirit is coming. We are reassured it will be okay that God is with us, that God is and will be blessing us. We are reassured through the coming of the Holy Spirit that things we could never achieve on our own will be possible. Because, because we too will, can and do 
receive the Holy Spirit, things beyond our wildest imaginings are possible through the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own strength, because if we're relying on ourselves, we're done for. But through God, these other things are possible. People are transformed. In the Gospel reading, we hear Jesus praying for the disciples, praying to God the Father that it will be okay. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth, he says. I've prepared them. I've got them ready and now sort of handing them over to carry on this mission, if you like. To pass on this mission of Jesus for after his ascension, for after the day of Pentecost. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was received by those and it's almost like a baton being passed on in a relay race. The Holy Spirit goes to the next people to work through them in this relay race through generations. Starting there, currently having made it here to Canberra. <coughs> Faith and blessings being passed on Miracles happening, healings happening, the church spreading through places, through years, through different peoples. We see, we've been seeing throughout the book of Acts of the Apostles, the church growing in the early church. But this passing on of the faith is seen in today's reading from Acts. Judas being replaced, so it's not 11 but the 12. They pray to God for guidance on who should be Judas's replacement. Matthias is chosen. The baton is passed on to him, for him to carry on that ministry of Jesus. I don't know how many of you keep up to date with the news of the church in Wales, but yesterday, up in Bangor Cathedral, there was the consecration of Father David as the new Bishop of Barsi, the new assistant bishop in the Diocese of Bangor. David may be known to various people here. He's, he was from this diocese. He served as diocesan director of Ordnance, served as curacy in Merthyr, I think, all kinds of other things. He had been chosen to be a bishop in the Church of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, the bishops of the church in Wales and others gathered together with the people of God, about 300 in the church, as he was ordained, as he received that ministry, and he will then be ordaining a new priest. End of June, he'll be going out confirming, he'll be going out preaching, he'll be going out exercising a different ministry to what he's done before. As these ministries are passed on, as the Holy Spirit is passed on, as this baton is passed on, as the faith goes from one person to another person to another person to another person, not because we're great at it. I'm not, that's definitely. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we minister in that power, not in our own. <coughs> and so we're at the stage that the faith has been passed on to us. We're at the stage that we've received the Holy Spirit, not just at our confirmations, but in other times too. It's reached us. And we have that question, or are you anyway? Wait a minute, that's a bit scary. What's going to happen? How am I going to make a mess of it? Well, if it's because just up to me and what I'm doing, the answer is probably yes, I'll make a mess of it. Let's be honest. But we're ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. So as we receive that baton, it's not a case of fall over or drop it, but you know, 
We're with God. God is with us. God is blessing with us. The Holy Spirit is within us. So as we are passing the faith on, as we are ministering in God's name, we're not doing on our own. We're okay. And so we've got that challenge, that charge, to receive the Holy Spirit and to go out from this place, out into the warmth of the village today, out into the communities and places in which we live and shop and work and matters of family and friends, making Jesus known, not just by our words, by our actions, and just, you know, just how we are, filled with the Holy Spirit, open to, yeah, who knows what possibilities. A year ago, I doubt Father David thought he'd be a bishop now. Sorry, Bishop David. I got used to that. Who knows what's going to happen in God's power? God does. God only knows, really. And so let us look expectantly, excitedly, towards what God's doing. And also look forward towards who's coming after us in the next round of this relay. Who are we preparing? Pass on the faith too. So it carries on beyond 2024. Bit of a challenge, open to what God might be doing, scary, change, doing things differently. But God's calling us to do that. We up for that. We up for opening ourselves up to what God's going to do next. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love.